Amphibians of Australia. There's a whole Wikipedia article about it. <clears throat> Amphibians of Australia are limited to members of the order Anura, commonly known as frogs. All Australian frogs are in the suborder Neobataractea, also known as modern frogs, which make up the largest proportion of extant frog species. About 230 of the 528 species of frog are native to Australia, with 93% of them endemic. Compared with other continents, species diversity is low and may be related to the climate of the Australian continent. There are two known invasive amphibians, the cane tone and the smooth newt. There is a whole article about amphibians in Australia that's actually kind of great to look at. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. There's okay. The Australian continent was once formed part of the supercontinent Pangaea, which split into Gondwana and Laurasia approximately 180 years, million 180 years ago, 180 million years ago. The earliest true frog fossil, Viarella herbsti, is dated between 1888 and 188 and 213 million years old. This predates the splitting of Gondwana and has resulted in frogs present on all continents. The first two continents to split from Australia were South America and Africa. The amphibian fauna of both these continents are varied due to the collisions with the Laurasian continent. However, the South African family Heleophrinidae and the South American family Leptocelidae are both closely related to the Ma Maya Bactrochidae, an Australian family of ground dwelling frogs. Love that there's dancing on my screen and you're reading frog facts. I, I here to I'm here to deliver. I'm here to deliver facts about knowledge, increasing people's knowledge about aquatic l l l aquatic beings, including frogs. Fossil data suggests that the tree frogs of the family Hydridae originated in South America after its separation from Africa. Outside Australia, tree frogs are widespread throughout most of North and South Africa, America, Europe, and Asia. Tree frogs presumably migrated to Australia via Antarctica. Similarities in melosomes, some Litoria and Philomedusa, suggest a relationship between the South American and Australian tree frogs. However, immuno immunological evidence suggests an early divergence between the families. <laughs> India, Madagascar, and Seychelles split from Gondwana approximately 130 million years ago. The family Suglugosidae is native to both India and the Seychelles and is considered a sister taxon to Myobactricidae. Suglossia is more closely related to the Myobactricidae than the African or South American families. Australia and New Guinea are the two major land masses which make up the Australian continent. During its history, there have been many land connections between New Guinea and Australia. The most recent of which was severed 10,000 years ago during the transition from the glacial period to the, in the current interglacial period. The result of this re result, recent land connection on the Australian amphibian fauna has been the swapping of species and even families. The origins of the frog species on both land masses can be determined by this distributions. It is likely that White's tree frog, Litorius carulia, migrated to Australia from New Guinea as it is widespread in Australia and only inhabits small animals out areas between New Guinea. Whereas the giant tree frog Litor infernata is likely from New Guinea as it is widespread in New Guinea and only inhabits the Cape York Peninsula in Australia. The single Nyctimistus species in Australia is another example of genus swapping that occurred between New Guinea and Australia. <laughs> There are two families which are widely distributed throughout the Northern Hemisphere, which only inhabit far northern Australia. They are Microhylidae and the Ranidae. Two of the 59 genera of Microhylidae and only one of the approximately 750 species of Ranidae are native to Australia. Although both these families are widely distributed throughout the world, they have only been recently reached in Australia and New Guinea. This is because the Australian continent has remained isolated since its separation from Antarctica and ha and as it has drifted north towards Asia, many species have been able to cross into New Guinea and eventually Australia. However, most of the ecological niches were filled by frogs had been filled before by the ranids and microhylids reached Australia. So only a limited number of species have established. <laughs> oh, I 
appreciate any and all frog facts. I'm just reading the Amphibians of Australia Wikipedia article. It's a great time. There's many pictures of frogs. You can you can see the Material Froggy Pond Collective out here in Zervan. We're just here chilling out, seeing if any other froggies will join us. Distribution. The distribution of Australian frogs is largely influenced by climate. The areas of biodiversity, largest biodiversity, often occur in the tropical and temperate zones of northern and eastern Australia. Arid areas have restricted amphibian biodiversity, as frogs generally require water to breed. Many Australian frog species have adapted to deal with the harsh conditions of their habitat. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Many species, such as the genus Cyclorana, burrow underground to avoid heat and prolonged drought conditions. Tadpole and egg development of frogs from arid regions differs from those of higher rainfall regions. Some species, such as those of the Cyclorana and other desert-dwelling species, have relatively short tadpole development periods. These species breed often breed in temporary shallow pools where the high water temperature speeds up tadpole development. Tadpoles that live in such pools can de complete development within a month. On the other hand, species those as the genus Myxophias live in areas of high rainfall. Metamorphosis of the Myxophias tadpoles may take as long as 15 months. The sandhill frog, Arena Phryne rotunda, lives in sand dunes between Shark Bay and Kalbari National Park in Western Australia. This area has very little freestanding water, and therefore this species has adapted another way to, of tadpole development. Sandhill frogs lay their eggs under the sand, and the tadpoles develop into frogs entirely within the egg. This adaptation allows them to breed with the absence of water. There are a large diversity of habitats inhib inhabited by Australian frogs. Variations in rainfall, temperature, altitude, and latitude have resulted in a large number of habitats within Australia, most of which are inhabited by frogs. In the Null Arbor Plain, daytime te temperatures can reach 48.5 degrees Celsius. Nights have freezing conditions and rainfall is less than 200 millimeters per year. These factors make it very difficult for frogs to survive and few species are found in this area. Conservation. During the 1980s, population declines were reported on Australian frog species and are severe in some areas. Many of the frogs that were reported as declining were high altitude creek dwelling species that were remote from a changing ecology. This indicated that habitat loss and degradation were not responsible for all the declines. The cause is unknown, but the disease known as chytrid fungus may be a factor. In some cases, entire genera were found declining. Both species of grastic brooding frog are now classified as extinct and all but two of the Torodactylus are critically endangered. Torodactylus diurnus is classified as extinct and Torodactylus liami is classified as near-threatened. Every species in the, in the genus Philoria is currently declining, and some species in the torrent frog complex, Littoria nanotis, Littoria illorica, Littoria nicolensis, and Littoria recola, have not been located for a number of years. As of 2006, three Australian species of frog are classified as extinct. 14 listed are critically endangered, and 18 are endangered. Of the 14 critically endangered species, four have not been recorded for over 15 years now and may be extinct. Oh, that's so sad! Prior to the large scale of declines of the 1890s, habitat destruction was the major threat to Australian frog species since colonization. For example, the decline of the giant burrowing frog, Heleoporus australia australacus, australacus? was mostly attributed to altered land use and fire regimes such as land clearing for housing or agriculture and high intensity fires. The distribution of the giant burrowing frog included Sydney and therefore large populations were destroyed. Yeah, there's so many frogs are dying. I hope that, um, you know, we've all, like, I think that's a sad thing when you read about the biodiversity in Australia. It's just a lot of Species that previously were endemic to Australia and New Zealand and New Guinea were just are just now gone because someone's put an earthly star crown again. <laughs> just like whoosh, big thing of light. I I really hope that you know, it. I hope it isn't too late to, to reverse some of the damage that has been brought by years, you know, centuries of colonization and into, and we can bring the the environment back to its natural equilibrium somehow. Not, not, not natural equilibrium, but like, just give the frogs a fighting chance, you know? 